No, uh, just for power. This is for the display. I'm not a Mac user yet. So I can walk through this table. Try to connect everything and we can start right now, okay? Okay. Um, you have to help me with the resolution thing. I think you have to set the resolution something. Just download the PDF from the internet. Yeah. That's easier. The text is Where is the You can always Is it really? Also, we we'll will wait a moment, it's just a uh, matter of... Uh, yeah. oh, I'll use your Mac and we just download the PDF. The guys that are gone. Maybe we can start Maybe we can Your computer doesn't find the screen. Yeah. I try to find it. Wow. Yeah, it's a one. It's the internet, and you can download the PDF file. The, the computer doesn't find the display. Is everything working up there? Why is there no... Maybe it's this next hole here. Okay, yeah, let's sure. try. But it doesn't show anything. Is it still in... I see there's no display. We have above nothing changed. Ja, 
I try to be fast. <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Jan Walter. I work for the mill in London, and I want to talk about a multi-exporter, which is an add-on for uh, Blender, which I developed, and uh, I'm using it to do render comparisons. First, I want to introduce you to the web page, because basically you don't have to write anything down. The slides can be, down in, uh, can be downloaded from the uh, website. Uh, there's a link to a render forum, which I uh, will talk about, and then you find a bunch of uh, blog posts. And, of course, there will be more and more over time, and they are all uh, rendering related. And uh, in the link sections, you will see uh, links to topics I talked already about in the uh, blog posts. So they will be reorganized over time. Um, this is an example of such a blog. It basically has an image, you know, and a bit of text, so it's not overwhelming. Uh, it tries to uh, cut down things I am currently working on and talk uh, about it only briefly. And uh, most of the time it's reflected, you know, in like repository changes. There are two repositories we will see later for scenes and one for the source code. Uh, the system I'm using allows me to uh, share code snippets. In this case, this is a, a shader from Radiance, which I ported to Arnold. So I have the same uh, procedural patterns than in uh, a Radiance rendering. And uh, of course, because it's my web page, sometimes there are off topics, but most of it will be uh, rendering related. So the forum is really for you to uh, Either read it from time to time, that's what most of the people do, they just lurk around, it's online already for a couple of years. But I really would like you to participate uh, because in case you want to post something, you have to be logged in. During the registration, they will ask you who owns that web page, that's just my name, and there you go. And uh, uh, you can, of course, reply to existing uh, topics, you can create a new one. One thing you cannot do is like uh, create a new category. So there are two main uh, things, a general section where you can, uh, you know, uh, uh, talk about scenes, for example, or you can talk about a technical paper. And otherwise, in the second section, there's just a list of renderers. And if you want uh, to add a renderer, you can't do it, but you can ask me. So there's a others uh, renderer where you can say, okay, I know another renderer. Why don't you add it to the list of the renderers? But most of the time, I just talk about the things uh, I really can get my hands on. So the forum is there for you to share the experience, uh, your own experience. There are two repositories for scene descriptions. The Radiance verse, you name it, is the older one. It started with a, a HTML page, which uh, got out of hand. But uh, back then, I was writing about much more renderers, and I used just any method, you know, to uh, have a scene and uh, create images with uh, arbitrary renderers. So that export multi-scene uh, description uh, repository is uh, basically really using my own add-on. And uh, the source code is on Bitbucket. And just two words about uh, pictures and publications. So the pictures, I don't allow uh, people, you know, to attach it uh, on my own uh, website. They have to uh, link to, they have to host it themselves and link uh, in the forum. Uh, but they are free hosting services if you want to show pictures. And for the, uh, the HTML uh, page below that pictures, that's actually how it started. Uh, 
I, I show different renderings uh, of scenes uh, with various renderers, and it was a single HTML page, and it just got out of hand. It takes forever to load now. So another approach uh, under the publications uh, was uh, I started writing a PDF file, which uh, on a scene-by-scene -scene basis would explain how the uh, exporter works and uh, explain the features based on current scenes. So the main idea of an exporter is uh, you have a scene description and then you read that scene description with a parser and you don't want to lose any uh, of those settings. So you want to keep this in the host and uh, then you want to render with uh, various other renderers and then uh, each renderer, I just call them here A to B, uh, A to F. Uh, each renderer has its own scene description and from the host you export uh, in this particular scene description and then you can cut the lines to the host and you can render uh, standalone. So the decisions I made so far is I started with Radiant scenes. Radiance is a very old renderer but it's very accurate uh, regarding global illumination. And I wrote an importer, and once the scene was in Blender, I could uh, use my multi-exporter uh, to export, for example, for Arnold, which is a .s scene description, Indigo is .igs, LuxRender LXS, Manfrey MI, Maxwell MXS, and RenderMan Rip. Uh, so RenderMan is basically uh, an open standard. The most famous one is obviously uh, Pixar's implementation, PRMan. But 3D Light and Air are just two other examples of commercial renders. Uh, 3D Light gives you a free license. And there are many other implementations of that RenderMan uh, standard. So uh, in this picture, I show uh, images which were rendered with radiance and the top three ones they come actually from a book about radiance and the lower three ones uh, are not related to the book but they are still uh, visible somewhere on the internet you can download the scene descriptions and I want to compare this with uh, pictures I rendered with other renderers so uh, let's talk very briefly about the top three uh, the left one is like basically just uh, a room with a light emitting sphere and you see that crystal sphere based on a blue box and then outside there's just a disk as a ground object and another building which is reflective in the sun and sky simulation. The middle one is like using, uh, that's something you do in radiance very often, you just have a common geometry and then you do variations on either the material or the lighting and then you say how does the mood uh, of a scene change by just using a different lighting. And in this case there are two different setups, uh, obviously that picture shows only one. And the most complex scene in the book is like a this uh, gallery scene which you will see in, a, in another slide. It's basically one room without windows and it has an opening on top and then the light can come through that opening but it hits a triangular structure and uh, that doesn't allow the light to go directly on the floor. It has to bounce against the ceiling and come back. So that's basically the worst case uh, for a global illumination renderer and we will see uh, in some other slides we will see how that affects the scene. The other ones are more complex, the most uh, famous one is probably this conference scene uh, on the lower left. That uh, conference room actually existed even 20 years ago they took a picture of it and then they compared it with a random uh, with a radiance uh, a rendered image and uh, it matched very well. The uh, middle one is a case study of a theater which was actually never built and uh, if you compare it to the rendering here, I think that is uh, it's done with Indigo, uh, uh, a couple of things are missing. So I just take the base materials uh, and the the patterns, they are procedurally generated, so I, I cannot write this uh, for all the different renderers. Uh, most of the people would use textures anyway. But uh, if you look for the, on the left side, lower left, this is another perspective of that conference room, and that was rendered with Arnold. And uh, for that case, I put some effort into recreating 
or this radiance patterns for Arnold, actually they uh, match very well. Uh, then the one on the right, I just want to draw your attention to the staircase, because in radiance you can say basically that staircase is gray, you can tell the renderer, oh, don't worry, I want to uh, have the global illumination right, but don't worry about that particular object. If you compare it with the Lux render rendering, you see it's uh, looking much more realistic, but that's just something which is uh, particular to Radiance that you can do that. So that uh, top right image, that's kind of a, a flower, a lotus uh, made of uh, glass. And here you see a Lux render rendering. Basically all the other uh, lights are turned off. You just get lights from above and it's acting like a lens. It's bun bundling the light uh, and you get this nice caustics. Uh, the middle uh, top image you haven't seen yet, uh, that's from a, a part of a ship and it was rendered with Maxwell and you see that it's using depth of field. So some of the renderers, they force you to use a physically correct camera and in this case it's pretty obvious. Then the scene on the left, uh, the bathroom that's taken from Blendswap, it was set up already for cycles and then I modified it slightly, you know, so it can be used for uh, with my exporter for all the other renderers. So all this uh, you know, scenes are in a repository and there are probably a couple of camera perspectives and you can render with at least uh, six different renderers with my uh, exporter. So I want to talk briefly about commercial packages because that's the part I cannot share with you today but I want you to know that it exists. So on the right there's Blender again with Cycles, a very basic uh, head with a diffuse texture, uh, HDR, uh, image for the lighting and something to uh, catch the shadows. And uh, once I exported it from Blender uh, on the right side, then I can uh, render it standalone renderers and in this case it's Arnold. And uh, I wrote for commercial packages, in this case Maya, I wrote like a translator and that does not just export, it also imports scenes. So I can uh, use the scene I uh, export it from Blender and import it into Maya and it picks up everything correctly. So why would I do this? Uh, here's another example of that conference scene. Uh, the focus with Blender was really I don't want anything rendering specific in uh, the Blender user interface. I just want to have a scene description, bring that scene into Blender and export to as many renderers as I can. And uh, then I support only a couple of things like uh, glass or dielectric material, something like diffuse or glossy, you know, like plastic-like, and maybe some metal. Uh, but I don't want to see anything specific of that particular renderer in the user interface. And then once I bring it into the commercial package, I, uh, in this case with Arnold, I really want to play around with uh, uh, additional options. So there's an official M2A Maya to Arnold exporter, but with my exporter, I basically have so, uh, access to all the third-party shaders uh, ever written for Arnold, and then I can play around with the same scene and uh, try various shaders other people have written. So let's talk about uh, splitting up the image into several images for a purpose. So those light groups, uh, they are basically uh, available, I think, in Indigo, in Lux Render, in Maxwell, and maybe other renderers. Uh, what I show on the right side is screenshots of uh, Blender, and I try to highlight the, uh, the light emitting uh, uh, geometries, and sometimes, you know, like uh, here on the lower left, uh, what they should illuminate in the scene. And what you see on the left side is basically from one particular camera angle, what effect does that light group have? I just want to mention, uh, you cannot add up the images here on the left side because they, uh, they are uh, nicely lit. So what's happening in Lux Render, for example, uh, you turn off the daylight and then you can switch through the light groups uh, with the electrical light in the scene. What happens is that it auto exposes, uh, it adjusts the camera settings so it's always well lit. 
And what you would have to do is like you switch, for example, from auto linear to linear, uh, and then uh, the camera settings are frozen with all the lights on except the sunlight. And then you have a good exposure for all the light. And then you switch and then you see the real contribution. So if you would uh, add all the lights up uh, again uh, doing that, then it would be the beauty pass. Another way you're probably familiar with is uh, AOVs, which stands for arbitrary output variables. Basically, you can render anything like uh, normals, uh, positions in space, like UV coordinates into separate, uh, separate images. And in, uh, with Arnold, there's a workflow where you start on the top left with a noisy image and then you want to have a noise-free image uh, and that's on the bottom right. And uh, I will come back to that slide. I just want to show you the noisy images on the left top and the noise-free image on the lower left. And what you do is like you split the beauty into different things like diffuse, specular, reflectant and refractive and stuff like that. So on the, on the top right, the two images, they are, you diffuse. But with global illumination, you have not a single diffuse. You have, uh, in the middle, you have the direct diffuse and on the right, you have the indirect diffuse. And then uh, you can do the same with the specular, but uh, that's kind of boring for that scene, so I don't show it. And then the middle one on the bottom is like uh, the reflection, and on the right it's a refraction. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, uh, diffuse uh, on top, the two uh, on the right. So that very bright spot on the floor is basically what I said before. The light comes in from above. It uh, is supposed to... Uh, bounce off that triangular structure, but some rays bypass that triangular structure and they hit the floor directly. So only that stripe on the floor, that's basically coming directly from the uh, sun. So where's the other uh, light coming from? Okay, that is uh, a sun and sky simulation is basically a hemisphere and then you position the uh, sun in that hemisphere and uh, the remaining hemisphere gives you still light from the sky. And, uh, uh, and it reacts, for example, if it's, uh, if it's dawn or sunset, then uh, the sky color reacts to uh, the position of the sun. And so the light uh, beside the camera to the right, there are two windows, and behind the camera are two glass doors, and that's where the direct contribution from the sky into that direct diffuse AOV comes from. On the right, that's basically everything after that, after the first hit. So uh, think about uh, the ray goes already through the glass. That ray doesn't count. Only the, the material, the diffuse material you hit, uh, the first one is in that AOV. So all the rest, the bounce light is on that picture on the uh, top right. So uh, what you do in Arnold is like you look at the first decision and the last decision and it says if this particular AOV is noisy, then go to the global options and uh, increase some samples. And those samples are found on the left in the blue box. We have 105 parameters. AA stands for anti-aliasing and GI diffuse is the first uh, decision. GI glossy is the last decision. Single scatter uh, is for uh, subsurface scattering. And I want to talk just briefly about the middle decisions because the middle decision says, look at the direct specular AOV and if it's noisy, increase the light samples. And the other one says, the direct diffuse, look at the shadows. If that's noisy, increase the light samples. So uh, if you remember the first scene, like with that light emitting sphere, I could use a point light with a radius to have the effect of the lighting, but I could not see either directly or indirectly, that light emitting sphere with a uh, point light. So what you normally would do is uh, you use, uh, let's say, a sphere primitive and use a standard material with emission and emission color. But then you don't have anything to tweak. That standard material doesn't have any samples to tweak. 
So what you do instead is using a mesh light, you have, uh, cannot use a sphere anymore, you can, uh, have to tessellate, but then you can use an arbitrary mesh, and then you have samples again to tweak. So I'm mostly done. Uh, the camera settings, I just want to say, Every renderer has a very different user interface, but basically Luxrend on the top left, Maxwell on the top right, Indigo on the lower left, uh, and Blender Depth Pass on the lower right. Uh, you can misuse the same settings, basically film, ISO, shutter, f-stop for all these renderers. You just have to know where it goes in the graphic user interface. Uh, Maxwell and Indigo and other renderers might force you to use proper depth of field and then you need a, a, a focal distance. So you either take the blender depth pass and uh, hover over with the mouse and read the set value and then put it into the other renderer. Or like in Indigo while it's rendering you can just pick a point in the in the image and then it gives you the distance to the camera and automatically puts it in the UI and then you use it for Maxwell or others. With Maxwell I had a problem to match like the other renderers so uh, what I'm doing is like basically I use the camera settings I found for other renderers and then I end up with an underexposed image, which uh, you can see here on the left, which is pretty dark. And then I do the uh, inverse gamma correction. Instead of gamma 2.2, I use uh, the inverse and brighten the image up, and then it kind of matches uh, what I get with the other renderers. So let's talk briefly about the source code, the multi-exporter glass on the bottom that does basically all the work. And it has a list of supported renderers, and that list uh, grows and shrinks dependent on a rendering mode. So the most basic rendering mode is uh, you have no lights at all, but you can still use the AOVs like for uh, show me the UV coordinates and stuff like that. Then there's direct lighting, and then there's indirect lighting, which is global illumination. And every renderer or supported renderer uh, implements a class which derives from common exporter interface. And common exporter interface you see on the top uh, is a base class which uh, has a bunch of functions and you have to implement those functions. So if you want to add another renderer, you derive from that common uh, exporter interface and you implement those functions. So what are the future plans? Uh, obviously I want to support more than those six renderers. Uh, I might do the same thing for a commercial app or I might even do this for Blender again but uh, do it in C or C++. Uh, I could uh, need help with more public test scenes but then uh, please make sure that all the textures, everything used is like a Creative Commons license. I uh, happily host it in one of those uh, two scene repositories. So far I started with uh, importing radiant scenes. So uh, as soon as I go to blend swap or grab from any other source, I uh, need a radiance exporter if I want to compare against that renderer. Uh, the materials are very basic. As I said, it's like diffuse, uh, glossy, uh, some dielectric glass. Uh, maybe some skin or subsurface scattering would be nice. Animation, I just didn't have time yet. Uh, it's, uh, it's just taking too long already to render interior scenes with uh, all these renderers, but it should be easy to support. OSL is already used with Cycles and the uh, uh, Arnold implementation at so Sony Picture Imageworks. Maybe that's the future of uh, shading languages. That's something you could discuss on the forum. Maybe it's MDL, the material description, which NVIDIA tries to make the standard. Um, I'm looking forward, if, uh, if you want to register, you know, to cooperate with you guys, the source code is out there. And here, are, again, all the links. The company I work for has a Facebook channel, and I have, like, uh, the .com one is in the U.S., the .org one is hosted in Berlin. I'm moving more and more stuff out of the U.S. back to Berlin. Uh, it started with that HTML page, which gets out of hand because it's one page with a lot of pictures. Uh, the slides can be found on .org already, the render forum as well. And, yeah, the source code is on Bitbucket. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much.
before we go to the next talk, uh, Jan, can you say one thing about the conclusions? Or that's what I miss a little bit. How, is cycles really that slow, or is it not that bad? Do you know that kind of statistics? I don't think it's that slow. <laughs> well, can you quantify that? I mean, there are a couple of weird things, like for uh, example with the sun and sky uh, simulation. What I really do for all of this render, I just say, okay, that's the direction from the sun. And then all the rest is done automatically uh, by the sun and sky. And if I do the same thing for cycles, it somehow doesn't get through into the room. I mean, I tried it even with Lagoa and others, you know. What you have to do in cycles probably is like you put an area light in front of the, uh, of the windows, and then you get the same effect. But it would be nice uh, for the future, you know, if that would be the only thing I would... Yeah. Is Sergei had to talk? So the next speaker is Vladimir Alistrakov.